if a prime minister of Canada is lucky, and I mean really lucky, he gets to have a John Crosby in his cabinet. One, not two. <laughs> As I sat across the cabinet table from John for nine years, and watched him in action. I knew that as Prime Minister, I had just been handed a major gift. A man of high principle and unassailable integrity. John was direct and thoughtful in his approach. Brilliant, humorous, fully prepared, as Jess has just said, in advancing major questions of public policy. And loyal and supportive of me and my cabinet and caucus colleagues in the House of Commons. Years ago, Prime Minister Pearson, in describing the challenges and the cut and thrust of politics at the highest level in Canada, wrote, don't be downhearted in the thick of battles. It's where all good men would wish to be. John Crosby's close friendship, valued counsel and unswerving support made that come true for me. The Canada-US Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, a wave of privatizations, deregulation, reduction in the federal deficit, the introduction of inflation reduction targets and price stability, historic tax reform that included the GST. That was John's idea, not mine. <laughs> The creation of the Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency, the Atlantic Accord with Brian Peckford's government, Hibernia. And why do I mention these initiatives today? Well, for a very good reason. Because each one was part of the foundation of a completely modernized Canadian economy. And John was present at the conception and implementation of them all. Together, these policies, which were initially strongly resisted in Parliament and across the country, thank you, Brian Tobin, have over time quite simply transformed Canada. When I think of these achievements and the unremitting hard work behind them by leaders like John, a line from Longfellow comes to mind. The heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight. But they, while their companions slept, were working upward in the night. There are very few Canadians whose leadership contributions to our country and to Newfoundland and Labrador will resonate as powerfully and as durably in history as the body of work left to us by John Crosby. John Crosby était également He was also un visionnaire qui a connaissait très bien l'histoire de notre pays the history of our country et qui comprenait parfaitement le rôle de Jean joué par les exactly the important role of francophones in our evolution et dans l'épanouissement du français the bettering Internet. of French John n'a donc pas hésité John un instant avant de créer la création du Summit de la Francophonie et la de la Francophonie and the legalization of accords of Meech Lake and Charlottetown. He was proud of his country. It was another somber day in Ottawa in the summer of 1990. We were in the middle of a worldwide recession. Meech had been defeated in the Quebec caucus, 63 members strong at the previous election, were devastated and angry. Free trade was off to a slow start and Canadians were sharpening their knives for me in anticipation of the GST. John Crosby sat in my center block office towards the end of the afternoon, just the two of us. Hibernia was on the agenda, and the companies were asking for a $2.7 billion guarantee 
in order to bring the oil on stream and without which the project would surely atrophy and die. This idea was widely opposed by many business and interest groups and even the influential Toronto Globe and Mail had weighed in with a powerful editorial against Hibernia. The Finance Department of the Government of Canada was very skeptical because of our burgeoning deficit brought on by the recession. John said quietly, Prime Minister, I know that the Quebec caucus and many others oppose this. But you have often said that what you wanted was to give Newfoundland a hand up, not a handout. Well, he continued, this, this Prime Minister is the hand up we need. And I think it will deeply transform the economy of Newfoundland and Labrador and give all Newfoundlanders, finally, the hope for a better day. He concluded, and I quote him, I hate to ask you to speak to the Quebec caucus again after what they have just suffered through with the rejection of Meech. But in my view, it's the only way we can get it done. I leave it entirely in your hands." Unquote. John's loyalty and strength and enormous contribution to Canada had brought him to this moment. And as I looked at him that day in the fading sunlight of a lovely Ottawa summer afternoon, I just knew he was right, and I knew as well that I had to do it. And so I met with Michael Wilson, Minister of Finance, and Don Mazankowski, my Deputy Prime Minister. I met again with the entire Quebec caucus, and then I called a special meeting of the full cabinet. I told them then that I was fully aware of their strong opposition, hesitations and concerns but that I had decided such action, and Joe was with me that day, namely, and approving. Joe was approving of this as well. Namely, approving a $2.7 billion financial guarantee for Hibernia that included an important equity purchase. I thought it was, and I said, this is in the Canadian national interest and my government is going to proceed with this to enable Newfoundland and Labrador to have a chance at prosperity. As I concluded, I could see, sense that John, who this day was seated on my left, was overcome with emotion, only to recover and whisper, thank you, Prime Minister, and then looking at his colleagues, thank you all. But as I wrote in my memoirs, the truth is, that while I took the decision as Prime Minister, someone's got to decide, that I took the decision and battled it through the system. And I said in my memoirs, Newfoundland owed an enormous amount to John Crosby, as did Canada. So it really was done as a tribute to John Crosby's leadership and his vision for a better day for his beloved province. The final word, years later, went to Jeffrey Simpson, the Globe and Mail's senior columnist. And I quote, No one now thinks, as many in his cabinet and editorial writers at this newspaper did at the time, no one now thinks that Prime Minister Mulroney acted rashly in supporting the development of Hibernia offshore oil fields that have done so much for Newfoundland, unquote. In fact, that decision was the seminal moment in my many, many years of valued friendship and active cooperation with John Crosby. The truth is, Hibernia was his moment, and Hibernia was his dream. Now, commentators have discussed the Crosby sense of humor. Funny, I never saw any of it. 
So here we are at another cabinet meeting a little while later, and the Minister of Communications came in with a project, a projet de loi, a bill, uh, to um, create a new instrument called Newsworld and to fund it with a further grant to the CBC. So the debate went around the, the cabinet table, and finally, John put up his hand. Now, I can't imitate him, but I'm going to try. What the hell? <laughs> he put up his hand, and you know, many of you know that when he was trying to make an important point, he closed his eyes. <laughs> so I knew it was going to be important because both of them were bat shut. <laughs> so he puts up his hand and he said, Prime Minister, May I say something? I said, sure, John, what is it? He said, as I understand it, we are presently giving the CBC a billion dollars a year so they can savage us 18 hours a day. Said, is that right, Prime Minister? I said, well, John, it's just about right. And he said, as I understand this one today, we are going to create an instrument called Newsworld, and we are going to give the CBC another $200 million so they can savage us 24 hours a day. <laughs> Is that right, Prime Minister? I said, well, I think so, John. He said, well, Prime Minister, I'm going to need your help. You're a very smart man. And you're a great speaker, Prime Minister. You're very eloquent. I'm going to ask you to come with me to Newfoundland and speak to the good people of Newfoundland to convince them a little bit. Because they have never heard of anything so stupid in their entire lives. <laughs> so I said, John, if it's okay, I'll pass on that trip. Well, James Joyce once wrote that the past is consumed in the present, and the present is alive only because it gives birth to the future. Well, John Crosby made certain, with his exemplary life and sterling contribution, that the future of his Canada and that of Newfoundland and Labrador that he had served so honorably and well for so long will bring opportunity and hope and happiness to all who hold our coveted citizenship as the decades unfold and Canada continues on its ongoing path to higher achievement, greatness, and success. And 50 or 100 years from now, if Canadians stop for just a moment to reflect on the leaders and builders who brought our country to such a commanding place in the community of nations. I believe that many will whisper a special word of gratitude to John Crosby, whose nation-building contributions will then be even more evident than they are today. And they will know then, as we do today, what an exceptional man he was, and how splendidly he served Canada and all of her people. You know, at a certain age, many people, and not just former prime ministers, wonder from time to time how they will be remembered in the unfolding decades. One of Canada's fathers of confederation, Thomas Darcy McGee, an immigrant from Ireland, reflected this sentiment in one of his poems. Am I remembered in Aaron? I charge you, speak me true. Has my name a sound, a meaning, in the scenes my boyhood knew? Well, so long as the bitter February winds sweep across Labrador on their way to the Avalon Peninsula, 
and the warm summer rains caress the fertile lands and gardens of his beloved Hogan's Pond. The achievements of John Crosby will be remembered and revered by his friends and their children and their children as a model for them to replicate and respect. When McGee died in Ottawa in 1868, Sir John A. Macdonald paid tribute to him in these words. His hand was open to everyone. His heart was made for friendship. These words of Canada's first Prime Minister elegantly describe as well some of the qualities of the Honourable John Crosby. He was a friend for all seasons. Loyalty was an integral part of his character. He stood with his friends when times were good, and he was steadfast and true when times were not. In Macdonald's words, his heart is made for friendship. And I can tell you all that my family and I knew this well. And so we say goodbye today. Au revoir to the Honourable Farewell. John Crosby, patriot, senior cabinet minister, devoted partner to his beloved Jane, loving father, grandfather, and great-grandfather to all of his children and their children, indomitable defender of the people of Newfoundland and Labrador, and a proud Canadian who served our country with high distinction, unblemished integrity, and unprecedented achievement. No one, no one could ask for more.